So given a vector space with uh, a basis consisting of finitely many elements say d, then we defined the dimension of the vector space to be equal to d which is the size of our given basis. As a consequence of the replacement theorem, we had proved that uh, if there is a basis of size d in a vector space, then any other basis uh, should also have the same number of uh, elements. In fact, this was proved by noticing uh, that if there is a vector space which has a basis of finite size say d, then any set which has size greater than d should uh, uh, necessarily be linearly dependent and any set which has size less than d cannot be a spanning set. So, let us look at uh, many more consequences of the replacement theorem in this video. So, we start with a proposition So, let V be a vector space which has a basis be a vector space with a basis beta consisting of D elements. Then any spanning set of size D should necessarily be a basis. Any spanning set of size D is a basis of D. Okay, let us give a proof of this statement. So, we have beta which is of uh, size D and suppose L or rather S be a spanning set of V of size D. Then suppose our uh, set is not linearly independent. If it is linearly independent then we are done it is a basis right. So, if S is not linearly independent. Then what happens is recall by a theorem which we proved in the second video of this week, if uh, a set S is uh, not linearly independent then there exists some vector V in S such that span of S minus V is the uh, span of S minus V is equal to the span of S right. Then by a theorem proved earlier, there exists an element V in capital S such that span of S minus V is equal to the span of S. But what is span of S? Our S is a spanning set. That means that span of S minus v is equal to v, but then this implies that s minus v is a spanning set. But what is the cardinality of s minus v? In other words, what is the size of the set s minus v? It is d minus 1, then ie there exists a set of size d minus 1 which is a spanning set which is a contradiction because uh, one of the corollaries we proved to the replacement theorem said that any spanning set should have size at least d which is a contradiction. the first corollary I think of the replacement theorem. which was proved in the previous video. And therefore, our assumption has to be false. Therefore, S has to be linearly independent.
but S was a spanning set to begin with, it is also now linearly independent. Therefore, S is a basis. And we have proved the proposition. So, what have we let us just look at uh, the statement we have just proved. The proposition says that if we have a vector space containing a basis of size d, then any spanning set of size d is a basis of v. We can also prove a dual statement of it, let us note it and then give a proof of it. So, let again v be a vector space. with a basis yeah, with a basis beta containing d elements. So, V has a basis which has d elements. Then any linearly independent set of size d should necessarily be a basis. Then every linearly independent set of size d is a basis ok let us give a proof of this. So, let L be a set of size d which is linearly independent. So, let L be a linearly independent set. Or size d. Suppose L is not a spanning set. Again, we will come to a contra contradiction, and therefore L has to necessarily be a spanning set, and a spanning set which is linearly independent must be a basis. So let us come to a contradiction by assuming that L is not a spanning set. What does it mean to say that? something is not a spanning set. It means span of L will not contain some element of V. So, so let V be an element in capital V such that V does not belong to span of L. Then by uh, the theorem which we proved in the last video, L union V will be a linearly independent set. Then L tilde equal to L union V, or maybe not L tilde, let me call it L prime equal to L union V is a linearly independent set. But what is the size or cardinality of the set L prime? L prime has cardinality or size d plus 1. And the corollary that we have proved to the replace one of the corollaries we proved to the re replacement theorem said that any linearly independent set should have size less than or equal to d, right? Which is a contradiction. So, this is a contradiction to I think the second corollary. So, I will just write a corollary. the replacement theorem. Therefore, our assumption is false that L is not a spanning set. Therefore, hence L is a spanning set which is also linearly independent which gives that L is a basis and hence we have proved the proposition. So, we have just proved that any linearly independent set of size d should necessarily be a basis. So, any linearly independent set of size d should be a basis, any spanning set of size d should also be a basis, where d is the dimension of our given vector space. Okay, let us look at more consequences. The next proposition tells us that every linearly independent set is contained in a basis. So, let us look at the proposition. So, 
so from now i think maybe i'll just write it let v be a vector space finite dimensional vector space let v be a vector space let me slowly start writing that v be a finite dimensional vector space and any linearly independent set is contained in a basis and any linearly independent set is contained in a basis okay so let's give a proof with the third proposition today so if you start with uh, a finite dimensional vector space what does it mean where x is a basis so let beta be a basis of size d so d is the dimension of our vector space and let l be a linearly independent set and l be a linearly independent set of say size d prime now we know that uh, d prime has to be less than or equal to d by one of the corollaries to the replacement theorem we will apply replacement theorem to l and s given by beta okay by applying replacement theorem to l and s equal to beta so beta is the spanning set s of size n in that case here it is d l is the linearly independent set of size m here it is d prime and the replacement theorem tells us there x is a subset s prime of beta of size d minus d prime such that s prime union l spans v but that's good because s prime union l has uh, size equal to d isn't it but s prime union l has cardinality or size d prime plus d minus d prime which is d and this is a spanning set which is a spanning set but what do we know about spanning sets of uh, size d we just proved that any spanning set of size d in a d dimensional vector space should necessarily be a basis which implies that s prime union l is a basis and that's precisely what we wanted we wanted to realize l as a subset of a basis hence L is contained in a basis. So, in a finite dimensional vector space, you start off with any linearly independent set, it should necessarily be sitting inside a basis. Not necessarily a unique basis, of course, it could uh, be sitting inside many, many bases, but there is certainly at least one basis such that L is sitting inside it, L is contained in it. And as is to be expected, there should be a dual statement. The proposition next propose the fourth proposition today is going to be a dual statement which says that if there is a spanning set it should necessarily contain a basis so let v be a finite dimensional vector space then Every, every spanning set contains a basis. Every spanning set contains a basis. Okay, let us give a proof of the proposition. So, let us uh, start with some spanning set S. So, let S be a spanning set. We know 
that the cardinality of uh, s should be at least d. So, if we can manage to get hold of d linearly independent vectors, then by uh, one of the propositions proved earlier today, a linearly independent set of size d is necessarily a basis where d is the finite dimensional, uh, sorry, dimension of uh, so of v where dimension of v is equal to d. So, let us fix the dimension to be d. That means there exists a basis of size d of v. So, if we just manage to get hold of a subset of s which has d elements which is linearly independent then it should be a basis and uh, the theorem would have been proved because then we would have obtained a basis sitting inside it. Suppose we are not able to get uh, a linearly independent subset of S which has uh, d elements. Of course, any linearly independent set should necessarily have less than or equal to d elements by one of the propositions, one of the corollaries to the replacement theorem. But suppose we do not have a linearly independent set sitting inside S which has size d. Suppose d prime is the largest integer such that d prime is less than d and there exists a linearly independent set of size d prime. In fact, let us do one thing. Let d prime be the largest integer such that there exists a linearly independent subset set of size d prime contained in v, sorry, contained in S. So, if d prime is less than d, so that is our contention, right? d prime cannot be greater than d because any linearly independent set should have cardinality less than or equal to d. So, if so this is not supposed, let d prime, okay. So, d prime clearly is, uh, let me just note that clearly d prime is less than or equal to d. Suppose d prime is strictly less than d, that means that there exists some, then, then there exists uh, set there exists a set uh, L of size d prime and L is linearly independent. But then because the size of L is less than d it cannot be a spanning set because we have already noted that any spanning set should have size at least equal to d. So, let us look at some vector v. So, let v be an element in capital S such that v does not belong to span of capital L. Notice that this is uh, necessarily the case because otherwise uh, span of S will then be the span of L which is uh, the entire vector space. So, there certainly exists one such V such that V does not belong to the span of L. But by one of the theorems we proved in the previous video, L union V is linearly independent. And what more do we know about L union V? It's a linearly independent subset of S of size d prime plus 1, which cannot happen, right? Because d prime, which is a contradiction to the fact or to the assumption that d prime is the largest integer, so that there exists a linearly independent of, uh, set of size d prime. Yes, so let me just note it, which is a contradiction. I will just write to our assumption. Just go back and uh, have a look at what our assumption was, contradiction to our assumption. So, 
so the assumption was that so let me just draw it in green for you this is our assumption let me just underline it in green for you suppose d prime is less than d all the problem is coming up because of that the contradiction is coming up because of that hence d prime is equal to d but then that's precisely what we wanted i e l is a basis why because a linearly independent set of size d should necessarily be a spanning set it should be a basis and uh, this is contained in capital s we start off with s on a side hence we are done let us next explore uh, what we can talk about uh, the dimension of a subspace of a given vector space. so let v be some vector space with uh, with w as its subspace so let's call it a theorem now so let v be a finite dimensional vector space if w is a subspace of v then dimension of w should necessarily be less than or equal to the dimension of v if w is a subspace of v then dimension of w should be less than or equal to the dimension of v moreover if the dimension of v is equal to the dimension of w then w is equal to v if dimension of w is equal to the dimension of v then w is equal to v it's not a proper subspace it has to necessarily be the entire subspace all right so let's give a proof of this so suppose dimension of v is equal to d so let dimension of v is equal to d it's a finite dimensional vector space so if uh, w is the empty subspace then we are done if w is the not the empty subspace i'm sorry if w is the zero subspace if it is a zero subspace the empty set is the basis right then dimension of w is zero which is clearly less than or equal to the dimension of capital v so this is equal only if v is also the zero subspace with equality if dimension of v is equal to zero i e v is the zero subspace okay so let's now look at the case when w is not the zero subspace and clearly v is also not the zero subspace right so any element of w should be an element of v so so let w be some arbitrary subspace let's look at the other case so let's start let's try to get hold of uh, a linearly independent set in capital w notice that any linearly independent set in capital w will also be a linearly independent set in v in in, a, in the vector space v okay so let v1 be uh, a non zero vector in w be a non zero vector in capital w so if span of v1 is w1 so if span of v1 is equal to w not w1 w then dimension of v is equal to 1 sorry dimension of w is equal to 1 which is clearly less than or equal to the dimension of v clearly dimension of v has to be greater than or equal to 1 right because v1 is also in capital v and uh, this is a linearly independent set it has to ne necessarily sit inside a basis and therefore the dimension of uh, v should be at least uh, 1 so this is uh, clearly true suppose not suppose uh, the span is not equal to w suppose v2 be in w minus span of v1 so let's pick a vector in w2 which is not in the span of v1 
then we know that uh, v1 comma v2 by a theorem i'll slowly start referring to the theorems which we are using you should be now quite used to all the theorems we have done because v2 is not in the span of uh, so v2 is in w minus span of v1 so v2 is not in the span of v1 and because it is not in the span of v1 the set v1 v2 is linearly independent again by one of the theorems we have already proved the linearly independent set should be sitting inside a basis of v and therefore dimension of v is at least 2 if v1 v2 spans w then dimension of w is 2 which is less than or equal to dimension of v right so if uh, this if if uh, span of v1 v2 is equal to w then again done then again dimension of w is less than or equal to dimension of v if v1 v2 does not span so let me just uh, before the suppose let me write let assume v1 does not span if it spans w then there is nothing more to do right if it does not span is when we are looking at this and uh, assume in this case that w1 w2 this does not span w then there exists some v w3 which is not in the span of w1 w2 and it belongs to capital w follow the same procedure repeat the above process a bit the above algorithm but this process this algorithm has to stop after d steps right after d steps after d steps if the algorithm doesn't stop then after d steps we would have obtained a subset w1 w2 up to wd which is linearly independent right if that is the case the linear independence of uh, w1 w2 up to wt in capital w implies the linear independence of w1 to wd in capital v and we know that v has dimension d right hence w1 to wd spans v because it's a and hence a basis here right because it has it's a linearly independent set of uh, size d therefore it has a basis but if w1 w2 up to wd spans v then it also necessarily spans w because w is a subspace of v since w is a subspace of v w is contained in v this implies w1 to wd spans w but then w1 to wd spans v as well this implies w is equal to v taking care of the case when dimension of w is equal to dimension of v and hence we have proved the result okay so next week we will discuss linear transformations which is one of the most central topics in the study of uh, linear algebra